A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, and if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. For in the time of their visitation they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through stubble, they shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. With our mouth, then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted, so do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Faith of our fathers is not my favorite hymn, but it has a lot to do with my own personal prejudices and the author of the hymn, Father Frederick Faber. That's a whole other story that I won't unpack right now. But it's nevertheless an important song to be able to be sung on a feast day like today. The first time I really sang it and got into the spirit of it all, we were having Mass when I was a seminarian in one of the catacombs. And all of a sudden you realize what's going on. Sixtus and his companions are already told that they, as Christians and leaders, okay, bishops, presbyters, deacons, are under, by definition, a uh, pain of death, period. So what do you do when you know that your life is, in fact, going to be forfeit? Well, what they did was they went to the catacombs of San Calisto, which our catacombs will be visiting in September, and they celebrated the Eucharist, and evidently somebody blew the whistle on them, 
And they were hauled off and they were executed the same day they were caught. The same day. That's it. That's it. Now, when we sing Faith of Our Fathers, you can think of, you know, the, the, the persecutions in the Roman Empire. This is the middle of the third century. Faber, I think, had something else in mind as well, though, and it occurs to me. And that is the kinds of persecutions that were put against Catholic priests in the end of the 16th and beginning of the 17th century, okay, in England, where the penalty of being caught celebrating mass or baptizing a baby would be to be hanged, drawn, and quartered, disemboweled, the whole nine yards of it. Horrible. So I'm sure that he had that in mind as well to some extent. And it makes me think, okay, if I were around in the middle of the third century, or the end of the 15th, 16th century, and I knew these bans were in place, what would I do? In the 17th and 18th centuries, when those same kinds of bans were in place in Japan, for example, what would I do? What would I do? Would I be willing to go from house to house in masquerade, as they did in England, hiding in little huts, hutches underneath the staircase, the so-called priest holes? Would I be willing to do that, knowing the risk? Would I be willing to celebrate the Eucharist even in a catacomb? Why would they have gone to a catacomb to celebrate? Because, in fact, many, many people who are Romans would go to the tombs on the anniversaries of the deaths of the family, and they would have what are called refrigeriums. Thank, thank, thank sacrifices, okay? Think sacrifices, okay? They'd have a meal. It'd be like going and cleaning up the grave. They would pour a libation into uh, a tube, if it were a little bit more wealthy of a, of a, a place of burial, as a, as a, you know, let the, uh, the spirit of the dead person take part in the banquet. And a Christian martyrdom's uh, 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 place, the martyr's place, you could do the same kind of thing, or at least it would look like the same kind of thing. It would be a Eucharistic celebration, though, in fact, on the tomb of the martyr. It would look a lot like a refrigerium. They could get away with it, they thought. So somebody blows the whistle on Sixtus and his four deacon companions. They're hauled off, like I said, that day and executed. What would I do? It's a hard question. In one sense, fortunately, you know, we don't have bloody persecutions against Christians here in our country. But we know for a fact that those bloody persecutions are going on in other parts of the world. I'm thinking Nigeria particularly. I'm thinking of Syria right now, with Orthodox and Catholic priests and bishops being kidnapped. Okay, who knows what's happening to them? In Nigeria, all the terrorist attacks that are going on against Christians. It's a hard thing, very difficult. We can be grateful that we live far enough away from those kinds of things. On the other hand, how do we live our faith? How do we live our faith today in Mobile, Alabama? In the inspiration of St. Sixtus and his companions, we can ask that question and ask the Lord to help us to live the faith strongly and joyfully. Let us stand and pray.